Well, you go walking around 6th Avenue in New York, you're going to hear some chuckles coming out of NBC. They have struck gold with a Saturday night sitcom called The Golden Girls. The producers have chucked television's usual fountain of youth formula. They've filled the screen with ladies who have rich lives to draw from. Here's one episode. Betty White facing her first heavy date since becoming a, window, a widow. Let's take a look. Arnie wants me to go away with him on a cruise to the Bahamas. Oh. Oh, and you're upset because he wants you to pay your own way? <laughs> I'm upset because we'll be all alone in the middle of the ocean on a ship in a stateroom with a bed. Isn't that wonderful? That's <laughs> Betty White with her co-stars Rue McClanahan and Beatrice Arthur. Betty White is here with us this morning, and what a cast you guys have put oh, together. We are having such a good time. I cannot tell you. We can't wait to go to work. That sounds like a, like a tired thing to say, but we finished the show last Friday night, and uh, Rue McClanahan was standing there. She said, you know, we're the four luckiest broads on TV. We <laughs> really are. You know what? You, you look at some of the shows, and you, it looks like people are working, and it doesn't look like you, you're working. It looks like you're just having fun out there. Everybody came from a different direction, and everybody's been around for a long time, and they're all pros, and it's so exciting. to You hit something to somebody, and they bat it back, and it's just it's really a delight. And I you wrestle think. over the lines together, and you, and you give away lines? We give lines to each other. If, it, if it's better coming out of another character's mouth, we, we're happy to say, Betty, look, Betty, that would be better out of you. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to carry a gun. If somebody tries to take your line, you hold Why them off. Why didn't you tell me that <laughs> sooner, for heaven's sake? Oh, look well, at the B could wrestle me to the ground. Two falls out of three. <laughs> look at the publicity that happened before this ever got off. I would be nervous as a cat. Everybody's saying Golden Girls is wonderful. Golden Girls is the greatest thing since sliced bread. That worried us a lot because... Uh, it's fine that the promotion, we, we love the network for promoting us that much, but we were so afraid that the hype would work against us. Everybody would say, is this it? Is this all there is? So when the numbers came in on the first couple of weeks, we, we heaved a sigh of relief that it wasn't being crammed down the public's throat, that they responded yeah, to not it. Not bad numbers at all. In fact, it does go against the old formula of, of teens and, and car chases and, and shootings and those sorts of things. It's, it's entirely against the grain. You've got, you've got some older Americans who are dealing with real problems that people have. It's true. And as we go along, we deal with more of them. We sugarcoat them with humor, but they are, they're issues that have to be faced at whatever age. It's interesting, a couple of our scripts uh, have dealt with the mother-daughter relationship between uh, Dorothy and her mother, mm -hmm. that's B. Arthur and Estelle Getty, and you could read the lines at any age. It's still that mother-daughter relationship, that while they're older, they could be, you know, B could be 18 and it would still be the same problem. In our earlier segment, you saw Mrs. Bouvet, who was 93 yes. years old Isn't and that so something? wonderfully well-spoken. And she was talking about whether she wanted to live alone or live with her mother. And you, your mother, lives with you. My mom does. I won't let her out of the house. She's, she's mine. If she wants to go back to her apartment, and I say no. But you, you have drawn from your personal life to bring to this character, I think. So many things. All of a sudden, uh, well, in my character, Rose, it's a little different from any character I've played before. And I find there's a lot of Rose in Betty that I didn't know existed in there. I thought I was pure Sue Ann Nivens. Well, well Sue Ann Nivens isn't pure. I grant you that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what of Rose is, is, is Betty White? I don't know. Rose isn't, she's not dumb. She's just slow on the uptake. But she's not dumb. She just is very naive. And there's an innocence about her. That's not Betty. But she also has a, a sense of decency and morality that uh, surfaces every once in a while. And I find that. That sits well for a change after playing that other lady for so long. Betty, after Mary Tyler Moore, I, there hasn't been, I think, an extraordinary hit like this for you. But boy, this one is taking off through the roof. Did you expect oh, it? No, no. Uh, except that you get so many bad scripts presented to you that when the script came in, it was just such a joy to read a, a perfect script, as perfect as you can get. And so there was no, no problem about deciding whether to do it or not. It was, when do we start? And what you're going to do now is just take it and run as far as you can go as with it. As far and as fast as we can go before they wise up to us. <laughs> Betty White, thanks for coming by to talk with us. Thank you, Forrest. I appreciate it. And Believe lots of luck.